What's up you guys? Today I am back with another skincare review and routine. Lately I've been brainstorming skincare videos that I can create while I'm in the midst of my more long-term brand reviews. So that's why you've been seeing videos on Fresh and Origins and Glossier this summer. I've been trying to talk about brands that I am already very familiar with. So continuing on with that trend, today we are going to be covering Lush Cosmetics because this has been really highly requested for me to talk about. So a little bit of backstory here. I struggled with acne from the time I was a preteen up until about three years ago and it did range in severity quite a bit. My acne definitely became more severe and cystic when I hit my 20s but I also dealt with pretty bad breakouts consistently throughout my teens as well. So when I was 18 I got a job at Lush and interestingly enough this job is what spurred my passion for skincare. Lush product training is very ingredient focused and I loved learning about all of the natural ingredients in the products and why they would actually target specific concerns and through that I found the first skincare routine that had ever worked for me in my 18 years of life and the first products that ever even remotely began to tackle my acne. So today I'm sharing my skincare routine that I used back when I worked at Lush when my skin was ultra oily and acne prone. Obviously if you've watched me for a little while you know that I did go on to take Accutane because I got my other jobs in cosmetics, I stopped using Lush as much, my life basically fell apart and like I said when I hit my 20s my acne just really came back full force and became a lot more stubborn and cystic and a lot harder to deal with. So I just want to clarify that this routine did work best for my kind of superficial teenage breakouts. I've since revisited all the products from my Lush routine and I still love all these products, but I just want to be completely clear that this is not what has given me my clear skin present day. I did need a pharmaceutical intervention, but for the year that I did use these products, my skin was really beautiful and clear and balanced, so I really want to share that with you guys. I think if you do struggle with acne and you haven't tried Lush out yet, then it's definitely worth looking into. But anyways, I'm going to link my Accutane playlist down below in case you want more info on that. I'll also link some of the other videos I have done on Lush in the past. And of course, products will be linked down below as always, but let's get into it. So as per usual, I always try to go through skincare products in the order that I would actually use them. So the first step is makeup remover, and I use the Ultra Blend Facial Cleanser. So this was back when I had never even heard of double cleansing. I definitely had no idea what it was, but funnily enough, I was double cleansing back then and I didn't even know it. I think before using this product I had probably only ever used makeup wipes and like dual phase eye makeup removers but this is essentially Lush's cleansing balm. Lush now has naked cleansing balms so they're like a solid product with no packaging. Those did not exist when I worked there though. There was really just this and then the 9 to 5 cleansing lotion. The ingredients of this product are fairly simple. It is almond oil, rose, beeswax, honey, iris, glycerin, and preservatives. It's a very thick rich cleansing balm, I find because it is a pretty waxy base. It doesn't really emulsify when you add water and you absolutely need a face cloth to remove it. I used to wear much heavier makeup back then and it worked really well for me. It's also very hydrating. It definitely does leave kind of like an oily residue and coating on the skin, but especially if you are using it as your first cleanse and following up with another product, then it kind of evens everything out. Lush has something that they actually call the 30 day ultra bland challenge, where you are just supposed to use ultra bland, this and only only this for one entire month. I have not personally done this challenge, but if you Google it, there are lots of blog posts and Reddit threads and things like that on it, and the feedback on it is surprisingly very positive, especially for people with acneic skin. Now, back when I had first tried this, I was terrified of putting this thick, balmy product on my acne prone skin, but I was pleasantly surprised because it really helped balance out my oil production and reduce inflammation. It was probably also the first time I was ever properly and thoroughly removing my makeup, which obviously is going to make a difference, but you guys know I'm a huge fan of cleansing balms and cleansing oils to this day, so this product was definitely life changing for me. So I had two main cleansers that I alternated between, and those are Herbalism and Dark Angels. If you have never seen one of Lush's clay cleansers, then you are probably going to be like what the F is that because they are a solid how you use these is you're meant to pinch off a little piece I like to use about the size of like a chickpea and then you mix it with water in the palm of your hand to create a paste and then you go ahead and cleanse your face just a warning they are definitely messier than your traditional cleansers so we're gonna start with this bright green guy right here which is herbalism I use this morning and night actually all the products in this video I use twice a day unless otherwise specified because back then I did not have have a separate morning and night routine. 
as you've already seen, I am putting in clips of myself using all of these products. So you can see this cleanser is fairly crumbly even when you have added water to it. It is a base of kaolin clay and ground almond. It's not ground nut shells, it's the actual almond itself. So it's really like a soft almond meal physical exfoliant. This does also contain rice vinegar, which you can smell in it. I actually love vinegar, so that really doesn't bother me, but definitely will bother some people. And it contains rice bran, which I love. It's a great enzymatic exfoliant, perfect for dull, dehydrated, flaky skin. Also formulated with soothing rose and chamomile and antibacterial chlorophyll. So all around, this was a really great cleanser for my oily, acne-prone, and sensitive skin. Get ready to cringe. Not only did I use this physical exfoliating cleanser twice a day, but I would also use it with my Clarisonic Mia every single time, pretty much. Don't do that, you guys. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. That's just so much exfoliation and just so much to do to your skin, not to mention it was such a pain because I had to like pop off the brush head of my Clarisonic every single time and clean it inside of it. Looking back, this is probably the first time I realized how my skin does react really well to regular exfoliation, but now we are older and wiser and we use chemical exfoliation instead, but if I were to go back to using a Lush routine, I would probably use one of their cleansing bars most of the time, like Fresh Pharmacy, and then I would just use these cleansers occasionally. So the Dark Angels Cleanser is a product I would use once or twice a week for a deeper clean and even more exfoliation. Ugh. This is a detoxifying charcoal and black sugar cleanser. This one is very messy. You can't literally can't even see it in here because it is a intense dark pigmented black color. Doesn't stain your towels or anything like that though, at least. This seems like it would be really mattifying and harsh, but it's actually meant to be more balancing and suitable for sensitive skin. It definitely does detoxify the skin and mop up excess oils, but it doesn't leave the skin feeling stripped because it is also formulated with avocado oil. The base of this cleanser is a Moroccan clay called Razul Mud. This is a lot creamier than herbalism and it just creates a much nicer paste in my opinion. I have been using these products recently once again to kind of re-familiarize myself and I actually still really like this product when I'm in the mood for a physical exfoliant. I actually remember that back in the day I used to kind of use this as like a flash mask so I'd make the paste, I'd spread it over my skin and I would just leave it on for one to two minutes just to kind of you know absorb those oils and impurities and everything like that, let the charcoal work its magic. Nowadays I'm actually finding I gravitate more towards this cleanser over herbalism, but once again, I would still only use this as like a weekly exfoliant in the shower. There were three face masks from Lush that I used regularly, and I still purchase two of them occasionally. The third one has sadly been discontinued. It was the Sacred Truth mask, and I'm so bummed about it. I understand because it was never one of the big sellers. It was really underrated, but I'm still sad because it was a really great mask. But one of the other masks I love is one of their fresh face masks. So if you aren't familiar with their fresh face masks, Basically, you can only buy them in stores. They have to be refrigerated and they have a shelf life of about two to three weeks. My number one mask from Lush was and still is Cosmetic Warrior. This was actually just a staple in my routine, like I would use it basically every single day. This mask is an absolute antibacterial powerhouse for acne prone skin. It contains tea tree, garlic, and honey to target breakouts. It does smell bad, like there's no getting around that. This is like the Buckley's cough syrup of face mask, you know, it smells awful but it works, so it's worth it. It also contains green grapes, which I found to be really great for kind of lightly resurfacing the skin and really brightening up and fading old hyperpigmentation. And unlike a lot of other face masks for acne, this isn't drying in the slightest. It's actually really creamy, so it's great for old, flaky, scabby healing breakouts. The second mask I did not use as often. I probably used it like a few times a month, if I remember correctly, and that is the mask of Magnum Minty. So this isn't a fresh face mask. You can go into stores and buy this anytime. You can also order it online. So I guess I've actually changed the formula on this a little bit and from the ingredients it looks like I have the old formula. The new one I guess honey is the first ingredient so it's a little bit more hydrating. On the one I have it is still the third ingredient but I don't really find this mask hydrating but I wouldn't say it's drying either. It's just kind of like middle of the road. This is a really chonky mask. Like it has a physical exfoliating blend of ground aduki beads and evening primrose seed. I find this is more stimulating for circulation than anything because the particles are so large. I don't feel like it really does that much in terms of sloughing off dead skin cells and actually exfoliating. It also does contain a little bit of mint. 
smells minty so that kind of adds to the stimulating effects as well. I think this is a really good mask if you can't get to a Lush store, like you don't have one near you and you do want to order online, but the Cosmetic Warrior is still my favorite if you can get your hands on it. In my routine, I also use the Tea Tree Water Toner. This is an alcohol-free toner and honestly, I'm just a really big fan of Tea Tree. It's an ingredient that has always worked really well for me, so I think I really just like the fact that it was like another added layer of that antibacterial goodness and it does also you know dampen the skin so your following products are going to absorb better so I do like that. It does have kind of an astringent quality because there's also grapefruit water in this and juniper which is balancing and actually really good for damaged or irritated skin. It also smells like juniper too so it smells kind of like gin basically. <laughs> I did also use the two other toners from Lush but it was more like an occasional refreshing spritz. I didn't use either of them regularly in my actual skincare routine. The other two are rose and aloe vera. So more focused on soothing the skin rather than clarifying but they were nice to have on hand when my sensitive skin would act up a little bit. I don't think a lot of people know this but Lush also makes a product called toner tabs. So these are a little tab that you can pop in hot water and actually use to steam your face. So I would also use the tea tree toner tab occasionally before doing a face mask. I'll have those linked down below as well if you want more info. They're really cheap and they're great if you want to do like a mini spa session at home. The next step in my Lush routine was always the Grease Lightning Gel. This is definitely the product in this video that you guys have heard me talk about the most because I still use it frequently and still repurchase it. It has been in my Lush Top 10 and I've definitely talked about it in other videos over the years too. This is meant to be a spot treatment, however I use it as a serum. Initially I fell in love with this product because it was so different than the spot treatments I had tried as a teenager that were loaded with salicylic acid and benzoyl peroxide and just left my skin so dry and flaky and crusty. I also really didn't like that I couldn't use other spot treatments during the day because they would leave my skin so crusty and like dry and leave like a layer of white crust on your skin. And those spot treatments weren't even showing me improvement on top of that. So the first time I tried this, I dabbed it on one of my pimples before going to bed and I was amazed first of all at how it just absorbed and disappeared into the skin. But by the morning, just overnight, my breakout had significantly shrunk. The red irritated swelling around it had basically cleared up and it was so much flatter and I've been hooked on this product ever since. And then I realized I could also use it on my entire face seamlessly during day and night to prevent new breakouts and I just loved it even more. This contains clarifying tea tree, thyme, and rosemary, aloe vera to promote healing, and once again you also do have green grape, which like I said for the Cosmetic Warrior mask, I found this really great for my hyperpigmentation. So not only did I have a product that treats active acne, prevents new breakouts, it also helps with the healing process all in one product. Oh and it also contains witch hazel as well, so it's great for oil control. This is really just a product that tackles problem skin from all angles. I used two full pumps of this product and I just slather it on, wait about one minute for it to fully absorb and dry and then I'm good to continue on. My only complaint is that the gel does always kind of dry and crust over this little nozzle here so you actively have to go in and scrape it off pretty much every time you use it or else when you go to pump it out it's not going to pump on your hand, it's going to end up shooting onto like your wall or your mirror. <laughs> That's a very small price to pay, it's just something you have to be aware of. Okay so I'm actually filming the last portion of this video a couple days later. Not going to waste time explaining why and going into detail, but my hair looks a little bit different, so I just thought I had to acknowledge that. But anyways, the last step in my Lush routine was the Vanishing Cream Moisturizer. Truth be told, this is the only moisturizer I ever really tried from Lush. I was really nervous to start moisturizing my skin, so when I started using this and I found that it wasn't wreaking havoc on my face, I just 100% stuck with it. I obviously love my mom, but she worked in cosmetics in the 80s, so growing up I was taught that if you have oily and acne prone skin, you need to do everything in your power to dry it out you know, dry out those breakouts, basically strip the life out of your skin. I remember when I was probably like 14, my mom took me to the store and bought me the Clinique Acne Solution Starter Kit and she was like, don't use the moisturizer though, only use the other products. I wrote down the tagline for this moisturizer because it is literally, okay, hear us out. If you have oily skin, what you need is to moisturize your face. No, really, it all comes down to skincare basics. If your face is oily, it's compensating for something. And I was like... Oh. <laughs> Vanishing Cream is Lush's lightest moisturizer and it has a soft lavender scent. This does have shea butter in it 
quite a bit lower down on the ingredient list, but using it now, I can definitely feel that shea butter. Now that I've tried so many other skincare products, this really is not that light. It's also not heavy, but to me now, it just feels like a standard moisturizer. You'll probably see in the clips that when I start to spread it over my face, it doesn't absorb immediately. Like it takes a few extra moments to kind of like warm it up for it to really absorb into the skin. This moisturizer is all about creating balance for oily skin types, and it really did even out my oil production. Part of that was probably the fact that I was hydrating my skin for the first time in my entire life, but as I used it continually, long term, the results just got better and better as my skin kind of leveled out. So this made me really like this under makeup as well eventually. At first, I was too nervous to use it in the morning and I only used it at night for a while. The key ingredients for balance are lavender and witch hazel. The more hydrating ingredients are linseed mucilage or flax. If you eat a plant-based diet and you've ever made a flax egg, the linseed mucilage is basically the kind of gel that forms when you mix flaxseed with water. And it's also got grapeseed oil and jojoba oil. And once again, you've got that shea butter in there too. And it also does contain honey. I really love honey. I used to use pure manuka honey as a face mask. And looking back now with more knowledge, all of the honey in Luscious products are probably a big contributing factor in why they worked so well for me. It's truly just like a miracle ingredient for acne prone skin. And also just a final note on Luscious moisturizers. One of these tubs would last me six months if I was using it twice a day. So definitely goes a very long way. And that was my entire routine. Those were the only skincare products I used. Oh, how times have changed. I realized in the past that I said I started using eye cream when I was 18, but I realized I was actually 19 because I remember trying the Enchanted Eye Cream from Lush when I worked there, and that eye cream did give me Melia, unfortunately. So I realized I started using eye cream right around the time I was leaving Lush. But anyways, that is going to be it for today's video. I hope you have enjoyed. If you found this helpful, interesting, or informative, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out the description box for links to all of the products, and go follow me on social media. Media. I'm at Sarah Rihanna on Twitter and Instagram and subscribe down below if you are new for more skincare content But I will talk to you guys in the next one